What's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving my 1985 Mazda RX-7. Up front is a 1.3-liter rotary engine, and down below is a five-speed manual transmission. Now, I am super excited to be filming my 1985 RX-7 because I have a lot of work done to this car, and I'm excited to share it with you guys in my review format. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to the 13B swap under the hood. What is it and why did I do it? Well, the 13B did come in this generation of RX-7 for the last two years, 1984 and 1985. However, that was only available on the top trim level, the GSLSE. So this car that I'm driving right now originally had a 12A carbureted rotary engine in it. Still a two rotor, but it was a 1.1 liter. And in my opinion, the 12A is pretty pitiful in terms of power. Now, they're a lot more reliable, they're a lot stronger of a rotary engine, and a lot of the old school guys prefer them. But in terms of tuning and modification, the 13B is the way to go. So this engine is out of a second gen FC RX-7 that I have put into this car, and it has bigger injectors from a Turbo 2 Savannah RX-7. It has a standalone ECU, which is a Megasquirt MS3X, completely custom wiring harness by my good friend Adam and a custom tune by the same gentleman. And so this car is sitting making probably about 150 horsepower. That's what it was dynoed at at least, which is pretty fun for the vehicle. And it revs out to 8,200 RPM very safely. two main reasons why I did the 13B swap. First reason was parts availability. It's easier to find parts for a 13B fuel injected engine as opposed to a 12A carbureted engine because the last ever 12A was built in 1985. The 13B really ran all the way through 2011 with the Mazda RX-8. So not all parts share with that 13B, but some do. And so parts availability has been a lot easier with the 13B. The other reason is the power. I have a lot more power options and the 13Bs just make more power. They're fuel injected from the factory. So we could plug in a standalone ECU, plug in a tune, bada bing, bada boom, cars making power and running happy. All I had to do for the 13B swap was get a GSLSE oil pan and a GSLSE engine mount and it plugged right into the stock 12A manual transmission. Speaking of which, five speed manual transmission, this is the stock transmission for the car and I like it. You know, it has really good ratios. It's very fun. This car loves second gear and loves third gear as well. Those are the two gears to really ring it out and have a lot of fun. Fourth gear is pretty dead and fifth gear, even on the highway, I don't really use. So second and third is where it's at. Last but not least, this is rear wheel drive. All RX-7s are rear wheel drive and this actually has a solid rear axle where the second and third gens had independent rear suspension. This actually has a solid rear axle like what you would find in a pickup truck. So it's really, really solid, really stout. I actually drove a first gen RX-7 with an LS swapped into it with the stock rear end. And so this rear end can hold up to a V8 it can definitely hold up to the rotary. So with the drivetrain out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges. These are some of my favorite gauges ever put in an automobile. On the left, I have my oil pressure and battery voltage. Then in the center, I get my tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right. I love the tachometer because it has this red danger zone and it actually has a beeper for when you go over the red line. This is because when the vehicle was originally released, the rotary was so smooth that people were over revving them and blowing up the engines. So Mazda actually put in a buzzer at the red line to say, hey, it's time to shift. So that's really, really cool. 
Then on the far right, I do have my coolant temperature and fuel. On the outsides of the gauge cluster, on the left, I have my hazard switch and headlight switch. This is just to pop up the headlights, not to turn them on. And then off to the right, I have my rear defrost and this bottom dead switch would be a rear wiper, but this car was originally a base model, so it didn't get that. The steering wheel has been swapped out. This is actually the steering wheel from my very first car. So that's why it's red. My original first RX-7 was red. And so I swapped this wheel in just for the memories. Off to the left of the steering wheel, I do have a climate control vent as well as my power mirror options. Very, very nice. And I do have a choke. So back when this vehicle was carbureted, it would have a choke, and so you would pull it there. On the door, obviously, I don't have the door cards on. This is what the door cards look like. Pretty typical 80s. I do have a door cup. However, these also have manual windows, but you could get power windows. But we'll talk about the power windows in a second. Moving into the center, I have two climate control vents and my climate controls themselves. Very, very basic. As well as I do have a quartz clock one of my favorite features of the interior of this car. And I have a giant hole of where a radio would go. If I had one. Then I have an ashtray, very, very nice, and the shifter itself. The shifter I've always thought looks really presentable, looks cool, looks very 80s, and this is the stock shift knob up at the top. I did wanna keep that. Then down into the center console, I have these two little coin holders. This is where the power window switches would go if the vehicle had them. So obviously this one, like I said, is a base model, so it does not have the power windows, but kind of cool is this is where they would stick them. Then this other cubby would be the adjuster for the six speaker system. Again, if this car was equipped with that. So this car is not, but that's where it would go. Then I do have a center console, nothing really too crazy in there, meaning I don't have any cup holders. So the 1985 Mazda RX-7, 13B or not, fails the big friggin' bottle test. Now we gotta talk about the seats. I love these seats. These are the stock RX-7 seats. And I just love the 80s-ness of them. I actually find them really, really comfortable and I'm a big guy, so that's high praise. However, some RX-7s you could spec in this year, in this body style with back seats, they are absolutely dreadful. I would not recommend them. If you want them for the cool factor, I totally get it. But for practicality, they're pretty terrible. However, we do have a pretty big hatch around back. So let's go talk about that. All right, so we're on the back of my 1985 Mazda RX-7. And something I do want to point out, one key, one key to open up the back. Now, this was not industry standard. A lot of GM products and American products still had two keys, one for the trunk, one for the ignition. This is just one single key. The Japanese did that way before anyone else. But once we do open up the back here, tons and tons of space. One of my favorite parts of the RX-7 is the fact that it is a hatchback. Absolutely love that. And down here is just the spare tire well. I just have jumper cables in there just in case and things like that, but plenty of space back here. So much space that actually when I was in high school, I had a red RX-7 and my church used to do this fundraiser for raising money for our homeless shelter and we'd sleep outside in boxes in November, which is a terrible idea, but my box collapsed. I didn't have a place to sleep that night. So I actually slept back here curled up in a ball. Yes, me, I'm not a small guy and I slept back here curled up in a ball. So it has plenty, plenty of space. Now we gotta talk about the looks and and I absolutely love the look of the RX-7. It's one of my favorite parts of the car, not only the engine, but I think this car is just an aesthetically very, very pleasing automobile. I love the look of this car. I adore the look of this car. It's one of the best looking cars I personally think ever made, but definitely the best looking car I've ever owned. This is Stardust Blue from Mazda. And like I said, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And what else is there to say? Well, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think showing you guys my personal Mazda RX-7? A lot of people that are newer to the channel don't even realize that I've owned this car or that I've built it. Well, it's incredibly cool to show off something that I have so much time and energy into. I love this car. It's hard to express how much I truly love this automobile. Not just because it's such a cool 80s car, 
but because of all that time and energy I've put into it, it really makes a car special. And is the 13B swap super unique? No, it's kind of the go-to thing to do with first gen RX-7s. You swap in the better motor, that's just kind of, you know, the thing to do. But it was a unique learning experience for me. It was a fantastic learning experience. And I think it makes the car so great. The best thing about the 13B is that it really wakes up the vehicle. It gives you a very analog feel to the car. The 12As are fine, I don't mind them, but they do feel a little mushy, they're a little too cushiony. The 13B with the solid aluminum engine mounts and throttle cable, it really makes this car feel like a direct experience. When I hit the gas pedal, there is a direct line between my right foot and the throttle body of this car. And that's what I absolutely love. That's what I adore about this car. It's raw, it's unforgiving. When it doesn't wanna start, boy, does it not start. <laughs> But it's brutal, it's honest. It's that friend that tells you how it is. And sometimes there's some lessons that are hard to hear, but sometimes it's exactly what you need. It's exactly what you need to hear. And that's why I adore this automobile. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Huge thank you to like Adam and Alex and Steen and Matt and everyone who's helped me build this car along the way. You guys are the ones that made this thing possible and I just can't thank the Rotary community enough. If you're debating doing this to your RX-7 or buying an RX-7, it's been a fantastic experience. And as long as you got a little bit deeper pockets, I think you'll really enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.